All right, we got the Rockwood Mini Light 2506S, and it has the front, large front automotive style windshield, which looks a lot of light, good visibility. However, on the camp side, the door side of the trailer, we only have one real window. We've got the frosted window on the door, and we've got that small window next to the kitchen here that allows you to see on the camp side, but just mostly a little bit to the front. So what we want to do is we want to replace that window with a clear tinted window that has a shade, a pull down darkening shade. So that'll be today's project. This is the window as delivered from Amazon. Big gray van showed up, left this on our doorstep. Let's take a look what's inside. That's what they left us. AP Products Thin Shade. Shade when you need it, or see out when you want. Direct, you know, directly replaces existing window and frame. Black frame, tinted window, recessed pleated shade. Only a screwdriver. So we're going to go from a opaque window to this clear window that's tinted with a pull down shade. Here's the cutout size, 15 and 3 16 by 24 and 3 16 with a tolerance of plus or minus quarter inch. This kit includes tinted glass, frame, and shade. There's the part number, 15 all right we have a packet of mounting screws looks like about 16 or so this looks like the shade here's the inner frame Glass looks like it's sealed on there. And it's got a bead of sealant all the way around. Thin shade insulation structures. Looks pretty straightforward. I'll read these, get familiar with it, and then uh, we'll go from there. Just a, a side note here, the glass piece is adhered to the inside of the um, outer frame with the butyl tape. However, because there's been no pressure applied to it, it hasn't really stuck, so it will come loose. So when you unpack it and you're handling this window, careful, this glass will fall out. So I'll have to uh, uh, figure something out for putting it in the door frame, maybe use some painter's tape or something like that. All right, since I'm doing this project by myself, giving myself a third hand is what I've done, even though this frame is probably stuck to the door with butyl tape. I did add some painter's tape around it just as a precaution, so when I pull the inner frame out, it doesn't fall out, or it slows it down enough where I can catch it. To remove the screws, because there's 16 of them, I'm gonna use my drill driver. However, I suggest not using this for putting the screws back in, because it is plastic. So I will use a hand screwdriver to put the screws back in, but to speed up the removal process, I'm going to use this. Bye. Hey, see, that came off. That glass is stuck on there pretty good, so. Let's get There's some plastic tools for removing automotive interior trim. See if 
I can break that seal right, as you get underneath. Yeah, at the same time, it's pulling the glass out of it from its seal. As you can see, the glass on the original one started to come out, so I removed that first. You gotta be careful. You might wanna put some painter's tape on there prior to starting the removal process, just so it doesn't, in case yours isn't sealed as well as that one was, and it begins to fall out. Okay. Now we gotta clean up the outside. Again, just using interior pry tools for a car. Tapes, the butyl tape is not that old, so it's not terribly difficult to work with. About half of it came off with the frame, so this is actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. All right, just a quick test fitment. I'm not going to press it against it because I don't want it sticking to the frame, sticking to the door. It's going to fit. Now I've noticed when they ran the butyl seal around here, one end. It's not as clean as the other end. That's probably where they started and stopped. So I'll make that the bottom. So I have a nice even bead at the top because it doesn't appear to be directional at all. All right, that's the opening with the frame and window removed. <laughs> that butyl, I think I got a little bit here, but it doesn't have too much butyl, I guess. It'll adhere to the next stuff, so I'll clean up a little bit. The opening looks, I don't see any evidence of leaks, so the other one was doing its job. All right, at this point, let's go ahead and get this shade and frame prepared for install. The shade is uh, one assembly that sits in, in this notch here at the top, and the top is wider than the bottom, as you can see here. So what we'll do is we'll put the, the head of the shade in there, it snaps into place, and then we'll put the bottom rail into the bottom of the frame and the strings come down. Now, on the rails, you'll see there's a cutout, a little indent. The string down the side has to go through that indent so it doesn't pinch it. All right, let's make sure these strings aren't pinched or crooked in here, get everything lined up straight. Now I'll put the bottom in behind the tabs at the bottom of the frame to get the bottom rail set making sure the strings are in the indents at the ends of the rails so they're not pinched. Then to the top, same thing, the top head, the top rail snaps in behind some tabs and you can clearly see those. And just push it down. Now I'm noticing when I put the top in, the bottom comes out. And then so I go back to reset the bottom, the top will come out. So I gotta come up with a solution for this, something to hold it in place. And I, I think I'm gonna use some painter's tape or something like that to help hold them in place during the assembly. All right, so you're going to put, I got blue painter's tape, don't use yellow, don't use green. Preferably if you got some black electrical tape or something, use that and put as little tape on the flat surface here as possible so it doesn't show through on the window. All right, I'm going to use this tape here to hold the bottom and top rails into place so they don't keep popping out, especially during assembly up on the door. That'll make it quite challenging, especially when I'm working by myself. Check those strings, make sure they're uh, lined up and straight and in the indents. Snap this top rail back into place and uh, put some tape on here just to hold it, just to keep everything in place while I put the window together on the, the door of the trailer. All right, once you got this tape in place on the top rail and the bottom rail, the shade in place and secure, let's test this to make sure it's going to work. And it's going to be pretty stiff as you pull this down. That's good, it'll wear in as you use it. But uh, take note here, I'm using the handle on the shade. I have it in the wrong direction. It's upside down. This little handle should be down here. The tape is securely holding it, so assembly will be easier. But make sure you put this shade in with that handle facing down, or it would be technically outside the frame. 
check the strings. Everything looks secure. Now I'm going to move over. This is the outside frame. And here I've got the painter's tape on the glass because that is a little sticky, that butyl strip, but not very sticky. So I want to make sure this is going to stay in place. And I've got the painter's tape on here to help with that. And it seems to be gripping pretty good. Fairly comfortable this is going to stay in place. And each one of these, not too much, but I'll pull it off before I put the inner frame on. All right, and I've prepped the door for assembly. What I've done is I've taken these strips of um, painter's tape, and I've got two at the top and two on the sides, and the one here at the top, and those are going to help hold this frame in while I'm working, because I'm working by myself. So if it is to come loose, it should slow it down or stop it from coming completely out. All right, here's the exterior frame and the glass in place. You see you're using the painter's tape to hold the glass against its butyl tape seal. So it's not quite sticky enough to hold on its own. And then what happened is the tolerances from side to side in the opening are pretty tight. So the window fit in really well side to side. Top to bottom, the cutout is a little bigger than the window frame. So I got it at the top fine, but the bottom, the butyl tape barely stretched to the edge of the door opening. You know, I had some light gaps. So what I did is I took some of this silicone adhesive that I had at the house and I just simply ran a bead in here to make up that gap. Now when I put the interior frame in, it's gonna pull everything together tight and that should seal, so I'm happy with that. But when you do your install, you just be aware that top to bottom, it might be a little larger cutout than the window frame. The top side's the important side, that's where the water runs down. Clean up of the glass inside. Because I can't get to all of it when the shade's up. Remember, this glass is being held in barely by the butyl strip. So be very careful and aware of that. Now, also, don't put any pressure because the whole frame is being held in by a butyl strip that hasn't set yet and some painter's tape. Shade goes at the top. Got that first one lined up, everything else lines up pretty good. So far, all total on this project, I've probably spent 45 minutes I've done it by myself. Before I tighten these down, I'll make sure the shade functions properly. In fact, let's do that now before I get any more in. <laughs> Very nice, fairly tight, but I expect that to loosen up over time. Some people put silicone or something on the strings that might help it but I don't want it to get too lubricated where it slides down on its own or time the door is open or closed. One extra screw. So go along and tighten these up. Remember they're set in plastic so not super tight. It's snug. All right it's in. I can't see the blue tape that I used to hold the shade in. For assembly. Now we have the front windshield, the kitchen side window, and this window to allow us to see out into the campsite. So it gives us, it'll give us a little more light, a little more visibility out to the campsite side of the trailer. 
The only problem, and it's not really a problem, this, you may want to consider this. With the screen door, you can't close the shade. So you'll have to have, have to be a little pre thinking about closing the shade. It's just a, simply a matter of. So we'll do it at the end of the night, is when it's come out, and we'll close the shade. So that's the shade in place. Does a really good job blocking out light and creating privacy. Like I said though, you can't open or close it with the screen door in place. So just it's not super convenient. They do make some that have a handle here that create like a vertical. I didn't want that. This was a suitable solution for me, for us, and that's what we've done. This whole job can be done with that tool right there. Phillips head, screwdriver. You don't need anything else to do this job, and it took total about an hour. This is the outside. Now, something I noticed and this is something you're going to want to keep in mind when you use tape, if you use tape to hold the shade in place while you assemble it, don't use white or green because if you look real carefully, you can just see the blue. You can see at the top and the bottom. You really can't tell what it is from here unless you know what it is. But if it was yellow like masking tape or white like masking tape, then that would really stand. Mm -hmm.